Dear student, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to online classes of routine engineering. I am Dr. Naimat Khan, Assistant Professor, Department of Biotechnology and Genetic Engineering. In today's lecture, we will study about how to enrich mutant strand using M13 DNA as a template by oligonucleotide directed mutagenesis. These are different procedure of directed mutagenesis. These methods are applied in protein engineering to achieve desired characteristics containing protein. Previously, we study about oligonucleotide directed mutagenesis with M13 DNA as a template. In today's lecture, we will study about how to enrich desired mutation containing strand in order to achieve approximately 100% modified strand with desired mutation as compared to wild type strand and rest of the procedure will be discussed in our coming lectures what would be the outcome of today lecture in today's lecture, student will be able to know how to enrich mutant gene inserted in M13 cloning vector by using Conkill method. So, from our previous lecture, we have some basic knowledge of M13 as a cloning vector. We can use this as a cloning vector to clone the inserted gene with specific mutation. Previously, we have studied that how is it possible to mutate the inserted gene in M13 single-stranded DNA. For this, we perform few steps. For example, first, insertion of gene of interest which we want to mutate using single-stranded DNA of M13 as a template then replication of the other strand to convert it into double stranded DNA using mutated oligonucleotide primer and clinofragment as polymerase enzyme then ligation of second strand with T4 DNA ligase and transformation to specific host for amplification. Now in host we have two type of cloning vector. One can amplify and express normal version of gene of interest while other one with desired mutation so we have each one with 50% chance. Here is a brief summary of how to enrich mutated DNA with our desired mutation in M13 DNA. We can apply Conkel method. In this method, first we introduced our desired mutation through mismatch oligonucleotide and gene of interest. In this method, we can introduce either single base pair or larger that can include insertion, deletion or replacement mutation. We have already discussed these mutations in our previous lecture in detail. Please follow up our previous lecture for these mutations. So, Conkel method can be split into three main steps such as in view process. In this process, we use special type of E. coli strain that lacks two enzymes that are involved in the replication process of DNA. This step is followed by an vitro process and this step mutant DNA is amplified by special type of enzyme known as clinofragment. As DNA is amplified 
This DNA is transferred into wild type of E. coli. For further amplification and expression, in today's class, we will discuss these three steps in little bit in detail. Step 1. In view process, M13 DNA containing the target sequence is placed to be mutated into an E. coli strain that lacks uracil deglycosidase and DUTPase enzyme. This strain is normally known as UNG negative and DUT negative strain. Bacteria lacking DUTPase accumulate DUTP nucleotide while bacteria lacking uracil deglycosidase are unable to eliminate the incorporated DUTP that is a part of new DNA strand. As a result, the plasmid is transformed into DNA that contains uracil instead of thymine nucleotide. Normally, DUTPase enzymes are involved in nucleotide metabolism. This enzyme produced DUMP, which is the immediate precursor of thymidine nucleotide, and it decreases the intracellular concentration of DUTP so that uracil cannot be incorporated into DNA. Uracil DNA glycosylases are enzymes that belong to mismatch repair system and prevent mutagenesis by eliminating uracil from DNA molecule by cleaving the N-glycosylic bond and initiating the base excision repair pathway. Normally DNA consists of four nucleotide A, G, C and T. While uracil can only be present in DNA by two mechanisms, either cytosine deamination or misincorporation of DUNP residues. Step 2 In vitro process Target DNA containing uracil is placed with a synthetic oligonucleotide primer that does not pair at the location of the desired mutation. You can see here in this figure that all other nucleotides in green strand are matching with template strand except thymine. Then in this mix mixture, clinofragment is added which works like a DNA polymerase that incorporate uh, DNTPs into newly synthesizes fragment. Later, DNA ligases are used to seal the gap or neck in the new synthesized strand. Now, the M13 consists of double-stranded DNA, one containing uracil while other one containing only T. If we briefly bird's eye view clean fragment that what is a clinofragment? Basically, clinofragment is the large fragment of DNA polymerase 1 enzyme of E. coli that is produced by the proteolytic cleavage of DNA polymerase 1 by proteases known as subtelicine. Refer to this figure for your clear understanding on the right side as the DNA polymerase 1 before treating with protease. On the left side, upon treatment with protease, two fragments are formed, a large fragment called the clinofragment and a small fragment with 5' prime to 3' prime exonuclease activity. This large fragment, which is known as clinofragment, lacks 5' prime to 3' prime exonuclease activity. It has 5' prime to 3' prime polymerase activity and 3' prime up to 5' prime exonuclease activity for proofreading. The other small fragment 
has 5 prime to 3 prime exonuclease activity and lacks 5 prime to 3 prime polymerase activity. Clinofragment are widely used to synthesize second strand of complementary DNA. It is also used in DNA sequencing by the Singer dioxy method. Due to their exonuclease activity, we can use clinofragment to produce blunt and of sticky and containing DNA molecule because it can fill in 5 prime or hang to form blunt end or it can remove 3 prime or hang to form blunt end. It is also used in preparation of radioactive DNA probes. In step 2, which is in in vitro process, we have introduced desired mutation with mismatched oligonucleotide primer and extended the new strand with clinofragment that works as a DNA polymerase. Now we have M13 DNA along with inserted DNA and double stranded DNA form. Original or old strand is with uracil incorporated nucleotide while new strand is with desired mutation. As you can see here, old strand in black color while new strand in green color. Now in last step which is again in view step, the hybrid molecule is transformed into normal or wild bacterial strand of E. coli. Remember that in step 1 we have used special mutant strand of E. coli. Here in last step as the hybrid molecule enter into the wild strain of E. coli, bacteria repair mechanism start degradation of uracil containing strain because this is unnatural. While at the same time, bacteria replication mechanism start the synthesis of other strain. After the completion of second strain, both strand of DNA consist of desired mutation. Further amplification impl of both strand through semi-conservative replication method will result to both new synthesized molecule with desired mutation. Here is the summary of all three steps of conical method. First, we select to replace GC base pair with AT. We insert our gene of interest into M13 DNA. Conkern method was applied to replace GC base pair with AT. Then mutated DNA was amplified and wild type strain of E. coli that result in the replacement of GC base pair with AT in all molecule. Today's lecture was prepared on the basis of the following references. You can consult these references for your detailed study. In today's lecture, we studied that how conical method can be used to enrich M13 DNA mediated oligonucleotide directed mutagenesis. However, this is multi step process and laborious to practice a routine basis. In next lecture, we will study how plasma DNA can be used as a template in order to minimize some steps. Please inbox me your question via my provided email. For further study, consult the 8th chapter of Molecular Biotechnology. Thank you very much for watching online lecture.